Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take our seats. I'd like to call the Tuesday, September 6, uh, 2011, 507 in the afternoon. We're here at City Hall, City Council, Chamber 790 North Homestead Boulevard. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Board Member Burgess? Here. Board Member Lowell? Here. Board Member Maldonado? Here. Board Member Shelley? Here. Board Member Williams? Board Member Williams? Present. Vice Chairwoman Warman? Here. Chairman Bateman? Here. And we back up and uh, make sure I, I read the title for the record. The City of Homestead Community Redevelopment Agency meeting uh, now. And we'll take uh, deletions uh, or deferrals. Any? Okay, with that, approval of the minutes. Okay. August 9th, 2011. We got a motion, a second. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Okay. Nays? All right. New business. We're going to ratify a proposed budget, CRA 2011-2012, resolution of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Homestead, Florida, adopting the FY 2011-2012 annual budget for the Community Redevelopment Agency, CRA, and directing the city manager in our, uh, to submit said budget to Miami-Dade County and to the Homestead Council for its approval, improving for uh, effective date. Motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, report. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, members of the council, good evening. Good evening. Uh, before I get into uh, the budget numbers, I do just want to say, uh, as you all know, I came here about six weeks ago and uh, jumped right, in, right, right into budget season, right into budget season. And any community you come to, learning about the in and ins and outs of the process and how it works, is, you know, it's a pretty steep learning curve. I just want to say uh, the staff here has been wonderful. I know Christy, she's, she's been very generous with her time, uh, the city manager has been very generous, and Elizabeth, who's been my right-hand person throughout this, uh, with her, her knowledge, she's helped me really get up to speed. Um, I also know that the finance department and the city manager were putting together the city's budget, which I believe is a little bit more complicated than the CRA's budget, uh, but you know, for them to take the time and, and help somebody who's new to the city out really speaks a lot about the character of the staff here. So I just want to say thank you on, on my behalf. It's been a, a real pleasure getting to you and, and working with you. The second thing I'd like to say about this budget, we are doing things a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to run through some revenue numbers and some expense numbers. What I've done is taken our revenue and expenses for our administrative and program costs and put them together. And then I've taken all of what we're going to call a capital improvement uh, program uh, funds and kind of separated them out so I could give you, to show you distinctly what they are and how they come, come together. If you look at our funding sources, uh, we have something called tax incremental revenues. Um, they are based off the ad valorem tax rate, um, assessed rates in the city of Homestead. If you look in 2010, we had $4.2 million. If you look at 2011, $3 million. I think you can understand where this is going. Next year, we're projecting $2.8 million. So as the city's assessed value has gone down, so have the revenues of the uh, Homestead CRA. Now, in this next slide, you'll see our tax incremental revenues plus some interest on some investments, um, you know, some other funding for a total of $3.4 million. Um, this funding is going to come together and pay specifically for our administrative and program expenses. As you can see in uh, this pie chart, um, we have 27.5% uh, on administrative costs. That's, you know, building maintenance, uh, staff, everything combined. Uh, Maintenance and landscaping, 15%. Our hero debt is 12.1%. That is um, a debt service on bond that was issued in the 90s for purchased property and, and some capital improvements, you know, pretty much right after Andrew came through the city of Homestead. Our grants are 24%, uh, community policing, 13%. Uh, and code enforcement, uh, other 8.4%. That's advertising, professional services, those sort of things. Now, the next slide shows us with a new line item called capital improvement program. So you have our, our tax incremental revenues, investments, other, and then uh, CIP. CIP is budgeted at uh, approximately $3.6 million. Now, uh, we're putting the money in this fund so that we can come back to the council 
in the last six weeks, I've been meeting with different people in the community, and I, I've been discussing all the various projects within the CRA. And uh, what we're looking to do is come back to the, to the board and to the council uh, with some estimates on cost of, of various projects, both capital infrastructure improvements and development projects, so that the board can look at how they want to allocate this funding. Um, you know, the direction that we're going to need from the board and the council is how ambitious of a CIP program do you want to have? You know, we have a, a certain pot of money. Uh, there's, uh, from what I can understand, close to $20 million in, in different projects. And if something's very important to the, to the board in, in the direction they want the CRA to go, we have to look at other funding options as well, you know, grants, uh, financing, that sort of thing. Our total revenue with the CIP is about $7.1 million. Now you can see uh, the total budget with the breakout, about 49% of the total budget will be for the CIP program. One thing to note, we would like to allocate all of these funds in this fiscal year, but a, C a CIP program can go one, two, three, five years out. So we're going to come back to you and say, all right, year one, year two, year three. This is how the money is going to be spent or allocated. This way we know. Um, because once this money is spent, it's not coming back. And we want to make sure that it's being used efficiently and we have uh, a good understanding of how we're going to use this money going forward. And you can see that it really does uh, the rest of our program costs become much smaller percentages when you look at this chart. The next few slides are just going to go over uh, a couple of the programs that we do have. I know most of you are familiar with them. Our Residential Enhancement Program, this is part of our grant program. We've budgeted $375,000. This is the amount that we had budgeted last year for this program. It includes $150,000 for emergency home repair, $150,000 for facade improvement, and uh, landscaping $75,000. Now, each homeowner can get up to $10,000 in emergency home repair, um, $10,000 for facade improvement, or $5,000 for landscaping. Now, they can mix and match. They can get 10000 for emergency repair and 5000 for landscaping. They can't get all three. Um, the next slide is commercial enhancement programs. We've budgeted $300,000 for this. And I just want to be clear, right now we have, um, we're looking at a commercial facade improvement program, which is modeled off of our residential facade program. And uh, commercial build out, that's for a new business that comes in and needs help building out the inside of their business. I do know that uh, the prior CRA director did talk to you about uh, incentives for job creation and, and rent subsidies. You know, I just want to, I don't want to put them on the slide because I really want to take a, a very hard look at those two programs to see what's been successful in other communities. Because I think we, we just need to make sure that we, are, uh, we understand exactly what that process is going to be. Uh, I will be coming back to the board in October with um, how this application process is going to work. I think we need to have a very transparent process across all of our grants so that the board has some comfort in how the process works and the general public do. Uh, we're also going to be coming to you with the marketing program so we can get this out in the community. And you know, it's one thing to have these monies. It's another thing if nobody shows up and, and asks for them or understands how to go through the application process. And it's our job to really uh, educate the public on how that's going to work. And we're going to come to the members of the board to help us with that process because we're going to want your input on how we get that out into the community. Community policing and code enforcement, uh, $439,000. This pays for two police officers and two code compliance officers within the CRA. Assistance to community building non-for-profits. These are miscellaneous grants uh, to non-for-profits. Uh, last year, the uh, CRA created a committee to allocate funds for this. We funded 10 different organizations, and we are going to request applications in the beginning of the new fiscal year. And we're going we're to stick with the same process because I think it worked pretty well last year, and it gave the board a certain level of comfort. And I think we're, you know, when we look at modeling the other grant programs that we have, we're going to consider this. I think, I think it really does kind of level the playing field and give people that sense of transparency. Neighborhood beautification, 500,000. Uh, this includes a ground maintenance contract. This is the, there are 83 properties that the CRA owns. Uh, this is for maintenance of those properties and plus uh, some right-of-ways within the CRA district. And also two inmate crews. Uh, those inmate crews, they perform litter removal, 
graffiti removal and ancillary maintenance. Um, you had voted at the last CRA meeting for those contracts, and uh, this is the cost. Those are our main programs. Uh, again, we're going to be coming back to you uh, with a more comprehensive CIP program so that we can start looking at how you want to allocate some of these funds. Uh, what we're asking for tonight is adoption of the fiscal 2011-12 CRA annual budget so that we can present it to the Common Council, uh, to the Council and uh, eventually to the County. If uh, anybody has any questions or suggestions, we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. Comments from Council? I have one question. Sure. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you. Because the shortest year we're going to hear me go. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. And I have one comment for, for the public that's here, you know, the, the few members of our public that are here. And obviously they think we're doing a good job because they're not here. <laughs> um, and, and that is, it is a good job, job well done. And for the public that's here, realize that we've been over and over this. And we've had as much access to Rick as, as we needed. Uh, we've been through the numbers. We understand the numbers. And that's why you don't hear us here tonight debating the numbers because we're very clear on what we have and what our intentions are and what we're going to do with it. Uh, I believe we all have our own projects and that's great and we'll all move forward with it and, uh, and, and I'm sure spend it wisely. So for the public, um, we, we've done our homework and, and we know what it's about. Thank you, Rick. Job well done. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Yeah. On, a, on that note, uh, I don't know if you spoke too soon, but um, I got a question. <laughs> Um, I, I'm noticing that one third of, of, of the CRA budget, not with the um, the 3.6 million with the capital improvement piece, but just with the tax increment revenues that's coming in, one third of that is uh, perhaps on what you have, uh, which we looks like continual costs, uh, will go towards the community police and, and code and compliance or enforcement and then the other piece on ground maintenance contracts. That's one third of the 2.8 million. Yes. So, so how, as the tax value continues to drop, how are you going, because those expenses continue to, to rise, how are you as a CRA going to continue to maintain those expenditures? That is a... Because a that, that amount of money uh, is quite a bit um, going down the road. So how is, is police continue right. to escalate and salaries and pensions and all of that cost goes up every year? And uh, how are you going to deal with one third of your budget going to those two, two slots? Well, you could, you could tell that um, we're a few hundred thousand, you know, in almost, almost deficit at this point to keep those services going. And say that one more time. <laughs> that's that's where we're taking from cash reserves to, to continue those programs. Okay. That's 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 mine. That's and you're absolutely correct. At some point during the, the budget process next year, the board and uh, you know the staff are going to have to take a look at those programs. How are we going to keep the same level of service because it's unsustainable going forward past this fiscal year? And that's a policy decision. I mean, uh, we're going to have to take a look and say, all right, do we want to offer as much in grants, or do we want to take that money and put it? Into grants. If the commercial, if the commercial enhancement program is really good, we might want to take all of that money and put it there. We do have options, and there, that's a, a straight policy decision that I think the board's going to have to sit down and uh, hammer out. So you do recognize that this is a deficit. That well, it's going, sustainable. It's, going, it's unsustainable going forward. Yeah. So you know, I want to make sure that you know it's a well put together budget. But those those two items does you know concern me because it sure takes away from. Uh, I believe what the CRA is intended for, and that's to eliminate blight, and and I think those monies can be used uh, uh, in other areas to make sure that enhancement continues. But that's my that's my only comment on your budget. But I think it's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any any further questions from council? Okay. Uh, would the public uh, does the public have any questions? Please come forward. Hearing no questions, seeing no questions, I'll close the public hearing. And uh, Madam Clerk, any final questions from Council for which you roll call? Okay, roll call there. Board Member Maldonado? Yes. Board Member Shelley? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Warman? Yes. Board Member Williams? Yes. Board Member Burgess? Yes. 
Board Member Lobo? Yes. Chairman Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, motion to adjourn this motion meeting. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. All right. We're adjourned. And what, five minutes? We'll start the next one. Ten minutes? Seven minutes.